In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Yes, dearly beloved in Christ, once again, I'm happy to welcome you to our series, this time centering around the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year A. I, I once again believe that um, God is taking good care of you and God is blessing you at the point of your need. It is always my prayer that um, every time we come together to share the word, that God would touch us specially and touch all those who are dear to us specially so that we have the disposition to practice what he is teaching us. God bless you for staying around. My name once again is Reverend Father Emem Omoren of the Catholic Diocese of Ikorikbene in Nigeria. And today we have a message from God as usual. I was looking at the first reading of the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time and I couldn't help but just laugh. <laughs> Listening to Jeremiah, I mean, you will just be laughing. <laughs> For example, the very first thing from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 20, verse 7. The first reading is beginning from verse 7 and ending in verse 9. But that very first verse, uh, you will laugh. For example, Jeremiah is saying, Lord, you duped me and I let myself to be duped. You were too strong for me and you triumphed. <laughs> Can you, what, did, what did he expect? He's saying, God, you were too strong for me and you triumphed. Did Jeremiah expect that he would be stronger than God? I mean, ordinarily, when you, how can you go to fight God? Or how can you believe that um, you would win God? So he said, you were too strong for me and you triumphed. What would you expect? God would, always ex God would always triumph, dearly beloved in Christ. So, looking at all these readings, and especially that first reading, um, I want to bring to you a message around the theme, let God's will triumph over yours. Allow God's will to triumph over yours. Of course, there is, there is, there is no other way, there is no alternative. Because whether you allow it or not, eventually, His will will prevail. So from day one, just be disposed. Just be disposed. Allow His will to triumph over yours. Every one of us has His own will. I've been telling you about uh, uh, one of my siblings, one of my sisters, who always says that um, the worst prayer, I mean, she's been joking. I've said this before. The worst prayer is for you to say, Lord, let your will be done. <laughs> and what she means is that, if God comes to visit you with his will, especially that initial time, it's not going to be easy. God's will is always something that you just have to accept because it is coming from God. Because his will may not always be our will. Therefore, dearly beloved in Christ, as we stand around the table of the word, this 22nd Sunday in ordinary time, let God's will triumph over yours. In that first reading, we see how Jeremiah suffered. And um, he was complaining. He was lamenting. Lord, you duped me. You seduced me. I allowed myself to be duped or seduced. You, you fought me and you were stronger. And we know what happened to Jeremiah. When God initially called Jeremiah, he said no. He said, I'm too young. And God told him, I will be with you. So what Jeremiah did not understand was... The fact that God was not saying, when I am with you, there will be no problems. There will be no persecution. But God was saying, when I am with you, even in the face of problems and persecutions, and you allow my will to triumph, I will see you through eventually. That's why Jeremiah is lamenting now. But thank God, towards the end of his ministry, the same Jeremiah, no, changed from a tone of lamentation to a tone of hope and faith and acceptance of the will of God. Dearly beloved in Christ, let, God, let God's will always triumph over yours. 
And um, if you if you come to this before we continue, come to the second reading. The second reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 12, verses 1 to 2, tries to tell us that um, what we need to do is to discern this will of God. Because when I say, let God's will triumph over yours, the problem that many people may have is some don't even know the will of God in their lives. Therefore, Paul is telling the Romans here, he is praying for them and says that you may discern what the will of God is, what is good and pleasing and perfect. What is good, what is pleasing, what is perfect. What is good? The will of God centers around not only these three, but basically for today, let's think about these three things. If God is calling you to do what is good, it may be challenging, but if that is the will of God, allow it to prevail. If God is calling you to do what is pleasing to Him, it may be challenging, but since it's the will of God, allow it to prevail. If God is calling you to do what is perfect, holiness is perfect, goodness is perfect, Compassion, being compassionate is perfect. If God is calling to do all these things as far as it is His will, it's going to be challenging, but please, let's go, let God's will always triumph over yours. So this second reading clearly tells us that um, it is important, first of all, to discern the will of God. Know what God expects in every situation, what God expects of you, what God expects from us. And when once you know that, please allow that to prevail. It may be difficult, you may have reasons within you to lament like Jeremiah, but know that God is going to see you through. You are not alone on this journey. That's what God told Jeremiah. And maybe Jeremiah did not understand at that initial time, but eventually he did. And today God is telling us the same thing. Let his will, let, let God's will triumph over yours. Now, a very good example of how sometimes we think our will could be better and could be stronger we we falsely think our our will can be stronger than god's just as jeremiah said today a good example is in the gospel when jesus told his disciples i must go to jerusalem that gospel is according to matthew chapter 16 verses 21 to 27 when jesus told his disciples i have to go to jerusalem and um, suffer in the hands of the elders the chief priests and the scribes and be killed you see, go and check that place. Jesus Christ did not say, I'll go and suffer and die. He said, I'll go and suffer and be killed. The, the apostles did not take that lightly. Be killed? You are God? You suffer? It's, it's, maybe it's light to say, okay, I give up my life. I go and die. But now you are going to be killed. You, God, be killed. And you say, that's the will of God. Peter said, no. No. Far be it from you. God forbid, Lord. No such thing shall ever happen to you. That was the will of Peter. Because sometimes terrible things can come your way and you feel that what is pleasing to you, what is perfect for you, what is good for you is the will of God. No. What is pleasing for you may not necessarily be the will of God. Peter did not want his master to die, not to talk of being killed. And Peter said, God forbid it can't happen. But that was his will. That was his will. And then, what did Jesus say? To show that the will of God must always prevail. Jesus went to the extent of calling him Satan and told Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You're not thinking like God. You're thinking like man. Of course, here, yeah. Jesus would also make us laugh. How was he expecting Peter to think like God? Peter was a man and would always think like man. So you see, sometimes you look into the readings. Jeremiah, is here, Jeremiah here in the first reading is saying, Lord, you were stronger than me. As if he was hoping to be stronger than God. And Jesus in the gospel reading is saying, oh, you are thinking like a human being. You are not thinking like God. Peter was a human being. But what are all these things telling us? They are telling us that um, God is God and man is man. And as far as the will of God is concerned, no matter how challenging it is, dearly beloved in Christ, allow that will of God to prevail over yours. Peter had to suspend his own desire, his own will, and allow the will of God to prevail. And Jesus continued, whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Dearly beloved in Christ, today, 
there are many things that happen to us, many things that uh, befall us and beset us. Some are very, very challenging. Some are very, very uncomfortable. Some are very, very problematic. And sometimes you pray and pray and pray and things don't seem to be changing. Sometimes, I mean, you believe that God has promised that he will do this for you and it is not happening. Let us come back to think of what happened to Jeremiah. Let us pause to think of what happened to Peter. Give it some time. The will of God can be very challenging, but eventually you will smile when that will of God plays out because it is at the end that you will see that God had taken care of the beginning and the middle. Therefore, no matter what happens in life, allow the will of God to prevail. There is no way that um, you can overcome God. And the second reading even puts it well. He said, offer your lives as sacrifices pleasing to God. When your life is offered as a sacrifice pleasing to God, you will accept many things because it is the will of God. Dearly beloved in Christ, as we pray during this Sunday's reflection, I want us to pray mainly for the gift of discernment. The greater problem that we have is that we are not able to discern the will of God. Because it's not everything that happens to you that constitutes the will of God. It's not when everything, every time when you suffer, every time when there is a problem, it is not the will of God that you suffer. Get me right. It is not the will of God that you suffer, especially when you've not done enough to get out of that suffering. And if it should be the will of God that you encounter suffering, it is the will of God that that suffering be, um, you'll be able to transform that suffering into something that is um, salvific and to help you win the kingdom. And if it is the God, it is the will of God that you suffer, God will always give you the grace to go through the suffering. So don't suffer and sit down there, fold your hands and say, okay, it's the will of God that I suffer. No. Do your best. If you're sick, don't just believe it's the will of God that you, you be sick and you refuse to go to the hospital. Get to the hospital. Get treated. And try as much as possible to do your bit. When you do your own, God will do his own. So the will of God is, it can be challenging, but the will of God is, um, is subjected to our own understanding of what God wants, especially discernment. Discernment. Let's pray for the gift of discernment. Let's pray that God would always give us the grace to appreciate what we are suffering and know where our will ends and where the will of God starts or where the will of God stops and where our own should start. But in any, in any case, whatever happens, never ever allow your own will to try to surpass the will of God. It is the will of God that should surpass our own will. And um, sometimes you need to go to somebody. That's why there is need for a spiritual director in your life or a spiritual directress. That's why there is always the need for you to go and talk to somebody who can help you, pray with you and discern the will of God for you. As long as you know, know the will of God, it is going to be easy for you to abide by it, to appreciate it and to walk with it and allow it to prevail in your life. Dearly beloved in Christ, as we celebrate this Sunday, the 22nd, in ordinary time year eh? let us ask God for the grace to know his will and ask God for the grace to abide by his will and above all to allow his will to prevail in our lives and in different situations of our lives let us pray God our Father we thank you today for what you've done for us we thank you because we know your will will always prevail no matter what we do we thank you for the times you've You've not counted it against us when we, humanly speaking, in our childlikeness and childishness, think we can overcome your will. We thank you for understanding and for tolerating us. We pray, Lord God, for the grace to understand that your will may always and may sometimes too be different from our own will. Let us understand that we need to allow your will to overcome our own will and we need to allow your will to overpower and triumph over our own will. We ask you, in the different situations where your will is different from our own will, give us the grace to endure, give us the grace to understand, give us the grace to continue to walk amicably with your grace, so that at the end of it, we would, like all those who allowed your will to prevail in their lives, enjoy the kingdom 
when it is time and when you call us to yourself. And we ask, Lord God, that your blessings, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with all of us, especially as we get disposed to allow your will to prevail in our lives now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you very much, dearly beloved in Christ. And um, remember to subscribe to our channel. And when you like it, please share it. And as you go out there, always allow God's will to triumph over us. Thank you.